the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or a group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Just as important as defining what forgiveness is, so is understanding of what forgiveness is not. Experts who study or teach forgiveness make it clear that when you forgive, you do not gloss over or deny the seriousness of an offense against you. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting, nor does it mean condoning or excusing offenses. Though forgiveness can help repair a damaged relationship, it does not obligate you to reconcile with the person who harmed you or release them from legal accountability. Instead, forgiveness brings the forgiver peace of mind and frees him or her from corrosive anger. While there is some debate over whether true forgiveness requires positive feelings towards the offender, experts agree that it at least involves letting go of deeply held negative feelings. In that way, it empowers you to recognize the pain you suffered without letting that pain define you enabling you to heal and move on with your life. Forgiveness isn't just for the deeply monogamous amongst us. It is both a choice and a trainable skill that almost anyone can learn. Fortunately, research suggests that the capacity for forgiveness is an intrinsic part of human nature. Whether you're trying to forgive others, forgive yourself, or seek forgiveness from someone else, what are some strategies for tapping into that capacity? View forgiveness as something for you, not a gift to someone else. Fred Luskin, author of The Nine Steps to Forgiveness, emphasizes that forgiveness is best seen as something that will bring you peace closure, and reduce your suffering. Articulate your emotions. If you want to forgive or be forgiven, be willing to express how you are feeling to others and to yourself. Ruminating on negative feelings is both unhealthy and unproductive. Experts argue that it is an important lesson to teach kids as well. Look for the silver lining. This can be a controversial tip, but research suggests that after someone hurts you, you can forgive more easily by reflecting on the personal benefits you may have gained through the transgression. Writing about those benefits is especially helpful. Make an effective apology. If you are seeking forgiveness from others, Studies suggest that apologizing will help, but weak apologies might only make things worse. Aaron Lazar has studied apologies for years, concluding that an effective apology has actually four parts. Number one, it acknowledges the offense. Number two, it offers an explanation for the offense. Number three, expresses remorse or shame. And number four, involves a reparation of some kind. Cultivate empathy. When someone has been hurt, they'll be more likely to forgive and less likely to retaliate if they can sense or imagine the distress or remorse felt by the person who hurt them. This might explain why apologies foster forgiveness. Practice mindfulness. Training in mindfulness can help you become more forgiving, perhaps because awareness of painful feelings is part of the process of forgiveness. More mindful people 
are also more forgiving. Humanize the other through contact. Research in Northern Ireland found that people on both sides of the violence there were more likely to forgive if they came into contact with someone from the other side. Perhaps because it reduced feelings of anger and encouraged them to see the other's humanity. Do not let yourself off too easy. Research suggests that forgiving yourself for mistakes can sometimes reduce your empathy for others and your motivation to make amends. There is a healthy way to forgiveness. Study it. Seek peace, not justice. Forgiveness is separate from justice. The people who hurt you may never get their just deserts, but that should not prevent you from moving on with your life. And understand that forgiveness is a process. True forgiveness doesn't happen in an instant. Instead, it takes time and energy to achieve, and it might not come easily. So, what are the steps to forgiveness? Number one, know exactly how you feel about what happened and be able to articulate what about the situation is not okay. Then, tell a couple of trusted people about your experience. Number two, make a commitment to yourself to feel better. Forgiveness is for you and no one else. Number three, Forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciling with the person who upset you or condoning the action. In forgiveness, you seek the peace and understanding that comes from blaming people less after they offend you and taking those offenses less personally. Number four, get the right perspective on what is happening, recognizing that your primary distress is coming from the hurt feelings, thoughts, and physical upset you are suffering now, not from what offended you or hurt you two minutes or ten years ago. Number five, at the moment you do feel upset, practice stress management to soothe your body's fight or flight response. Number six, give up expecting things from your life or from other people that they do not choose to give you. Remind yourself that you can hope for health, love, friendship, and prosperity, and work hard to get them. However, these are unenforceable rules. You will suffer when you demand that these things occur, since you do not have the power to make them happen. Number seven. Put your energy into looking for another way to get your positive goals met, rather than through the experience that has hurt you. Number eight, remember that a life well lived is your best revenge. Instead of focusing on your wounded feelings and thereby giving power over you to the person who caused you pain, learn to look for the love, beauty, kindness around you. Put more energy into appreciating what you have rather than attending to what you do not have. And number nine, amend the way you look at your past so you remind yourself of your heroic choice to forgive. Forgiving is difficult because the human consciousness has a hard time living in the present. With language intertwined in the human consciousness, we use it as a time machine to roam in our memories. Although meditation is a way to empty unwanted thoughts that do weigh us down, it is language that distracts us. When we think about the past that haunts us, or the way we felt hurt by someone's words or actions, it causes us to latch on to those moments and as a result, we get stuck and find it hard to move on. The more we think about the past, the stronger the attachment, and thus, forgiveness is put off like an unfulfilled chore. 
too much anger causes lack of self-control, wanting punishment for the offender. And forgiveness comes from a place of understanding. After all, you simply might be scared to forgive, forgive in fear of getting hurt again. So know what forgiveness is and why it matters. Because become forgivingly fit. Address your inner pain. When forgiveness is hard, call upon other strengths. Forgive yourself and develop a forgiving mind through empathy.